Would you help us, and we have uh, people watching, and of course, some of our jurors are not lawyers. I want to talk to you about the burden of proof. What, you know what the burden of proof is, right? You know what that concept means? Uh, I do, yes. Okay, there's one burden called more likely than not. You understand that concept? Okay, yes. What does that mean? Whether a fact is more likely than not, like the preponderance of the evidence. Yep, and that's the easiest standard of proof if you're somebody advocating for something, right? That's, that's the normal standard in a civil court. Okay, let's focus. With some exceptions. Sure, there, there are. Turn your microphone on, please. Oh, there we go. Thank you, I'm sorry. He's not being offered as an expert on the burden of proof, and that's something for the jury to decide in their own mind, his view of what it is or not. He didn't bring these charges. The House managers did. He's not here for that purpose. It's unfair to be yet trying to, and irrelevant, for him to be being asked what his definition of the burden. Of, in fact, I'm, I must say, I've never heard that done before. And so I object to it as being totally irrelevant and improper for this witness to be, be even cross-examined about. What difference does it make what he thinks the burden of proof is? It's what they think the burden of proof is. Wait, wait a minute, Your Honor. With all due respect, this counsel asked this man many times about his opinion on whether law has been broken. Many times. And so I'm entitled to ask him about the burden of proof, especially on a illegality, which remember, he stood up there or sat up there and said that Ken Paxson signing a contract was illegal. So you can't open the door and then close it now. He has not testified as to what this jury ought to do or how they ought to look at the burden of proof. He was asked whether or not he thought the conduct was unlawful. He said he did, but the burden of proof has nothing to do with it. Those are two different things. The burden of proof is decided by the jurors out there, not this man or any other witness. I'm entitled to explore why he would say something like that, like in his, what is the burden of proof? And I'm going to get to that if I quit being interrupted. Overruled. You open that door. Continue. Now, let's talk about the burden in this case for the senators, our jurors. Beyond a reasonable doubt. What does that mean? Well, it means what it says. It means that you don't have any reasonable doubts. In other words, any doubts I have are not reasonable. You know, I'm not a criminal lawyer, but that's you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. When you went to the FBI and you offered up a good faith belief that Ken Paxson had been engaged in criminal activity, in your mind, was that beyond a reasonable doubt? I, had, I didn't think about that at all, sir. Okay. You just suspected, isn't that true? I didn't think about the burden of proof at all in those yeah. conversations. Sir. You know, I would think that you, if, you're, if you, you, you portrayed yourself, and I'm not challenging that, that you were a good and trusted friend, a good and trusted advisor, a good and trusted uh, confidant in some cases, right, to Ken Paxton. I, I don't know about confident. Well, you, confidant. Confidant, sorry about that. Sometimes my speech impediment comes through, I apologize. No worries, I'm not picking on you. I just want to make sure you understand the concept. I mean, you, you, you told us, the entire public, that you had a meeting with Ken Paxton and he talked about his marriage. Told us that, right? Well, Mr. Paxton and Mrs. Paxton had a meeting with the senior staff and talked about their marriage, yes. Okay, so I guess it brings me to the point. Wouldn't you want to make sure that you are absolutely sure that Ken Paxson was doing something untoward and illegal before you went to the FBI? Wouldn't that be what a trusted confidant would do? Somebody who's a trusted friend, somebody who's been trusted to run the office. At least you should make yourself sure. You know what? Before I do this, because when I pull that trigger... When I do that, all bets are off. I'm out, you even said, I knew when I did that, I wouldn't be the first deputy again, right? First assistant, yes, First sir. assistant. So wouldn't you, shouldn't you be sure before you do that? Sir, we were, very, we were confident. You were confident? Mm -hmm. yes, you sir. thought that Nate Paul had made uh, repairs on his home? I had been told that, yes. Who told you that? I believe, again, it was either Mr. Wicker or Mr. Rylander. You think that Mr. Wicker said that to somebody? Yeah, I, that, I, again, it was either Mr. Wicker or Mr. Rylander. It seems to me that would be so important. You'd remember who told you that. I mean, you're, te you're telling me somebody told me my boss was oh. having a campaign donor pay for renovations of his house, and you can't even tell us who told you that? Well, I... I, I said I believe it's Mr. Wicker or Mr. Rylander, sir. So if it's not Mr. Wicker, because it wasn't, 
You're saying it would be Mr. Rylander? Yes, sir. Okay. You ever played the telephone game with your kids? I played the telephone game in youth group, yes, sir. Yeah. Not with my kids. You, okay, well, I, how many kids you got? I've got three. I've got four. So I, sometimes I play the telephone game, and, I'm, and you know what that is, right? I do, yes, sir. Okay, that's a game where somebody whispers something to somebody else, and then they turn around and whisper something to somebody else, and then they turn around and whisper something to somebody else, and so on and so on, and then they let the last person repeat what they think they were told? Yes, sir. And sometimes it's comical how different the story is that's been passed from person to person to person and person, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what happened here. I don't A know stray right. comment from Drew, that Drew Wicker claims he heard that he misunderstood you, a trusted advisor, a trusted friend, you believe that Nate Paul had paid for the renovations of Ken Paxton's home. I right. believe that that was possible, yes, sir. Do you know that it's not true? I do not know that it's not true. Have you ever tried to find out? Um, no, I went to the, that's why we went to law enforcement for them to find out. Why didn't you just ask Ken Paxton? Uh, I had resigned. Uh-huh. You, you know, he could have shown, he could have shown you the invoices, the wires, the receipts, the samples. You didn't ask him. Well, I saw them because you had a press conference where you had them. That's when I Oh, I only shown a few. I'm going to show them all in this trial. Okay. I haven't seen them. No, How many sir. times have you told people that Ken Paxton had somebody pay for the renovations of his home? How many times have you said that to people? I don't know if I've ever said that until you asked me the question. You wouldn't say that to somebody, would you? I don't have a recollection of saying it. I mean, you shouldn't say it, should you? Shouldn't say it. In other I, words, you don't know it's true. You shouldn't be out there repeating it, should you? I don't believe I've been repeating it. Okay. 